Hey, what's going on, everyone? Uh, so, welcome to the workshop. Um, I'm about to start building my first uh, forge, coal fire forge. And, uh, yeah, let's see how this goes. Um, and I totaled it up, and 4619 is how much this forge is going to cost me. Now, this isn't exactly. This is what I bought today at Lowe's, stuff that I didn't have. <clears throat> I am going to be using uh, random hardware and some hose clamps and um, a little piece of garden hose and stuff. And, I mean, I'm not taking into account for the tools that I already have. So if you don't have tools, it's going to be a little bit more. But this is everything I bought to buy or to build this forge, 4619. So I got all-purpose sand, plaster of Paris. That's going to mix together with water and be my refractory uh, compound that's going to reflect the heat back into the forge and uh, create higher temperatures. Uh, the mud pan, that's a drywall mud pan, that's going to be the actual forge itself. It's a little bit thin of metal, so I'm a little skeptical, but it's stainless steel. And uh, I think I'm going to have enough refractory compound lined in it that it won't really affect it. I'm going to raise it up off the ground with uh, just random nuts and bolts and stuff that I have laying around. Uh, the black pipe, I'm going to cut a slit in that. That's going to be the airflow fireplace bellow. It's just one of those old school leather and wood with tacked leather to it, uh, uh, bellows to uh, create the air input. Uh, black iron cap, I'm going to cap the one end sticking out of the uh, side of the forge or end of the forge. I'm going to cap it and then you can uncap it when you need to and then blow the bellow and clear out all the stuff in it. And then a 90 degree, that's just going to create a better angle uh, for the hose to come back at you and uh, operate the bellow. So all that, I obviously I got other stuff and I had a, a coupon code. So I circled the total amount in case you don't have a coupon code. Uh, so 4619 is what it adds up to and let's get into it. All right, guys, so hopefully uh, that was a little rundown of everything that I'm going to need to uh, build this forge. One thing I did also forget is uh, drill bits. You're going to need drill bits. Um, but, yeah, hopefully, uh, yeah, pause and read if you need uh, specifics on anything. But uh, this is how I left it. I was filming from this little corner right there. And, uh, yeah, this is how it's all going to come together here in just a little bit. So let me set up the camera and, uh, yeah, let's start building this thing.
All right, what's going on everyone? Uh, so I got the forge uh, completely done. And uh, so <laughs> I had some issues with the step bit and things like that. Some of you guys were probably screaming at me uh, during the video and some of the stuff still not be, might be right, but uh, I'm just kind of winging it here. Um, I did do a few things that I didn't videotape uh, because my step bit wasn't quite big enough. I ended up having to use uh, pliers to make the hole bigger to get the black pipe through both sides of the trough um, so I put plaster of Paris and it's hard, of a, hard as a rock around those uh, jagged edges that were coming out a um, couple concerns that I kind of have I, I don't know if the airflow is going to be quite enough to get it hot enough to do a lot of stuff with so I might have to experiment around with a bigger hose diameter maybe a shorter hose and then a different maybe one of the uh, rotary style um, <clears throat> hand pumps. Sorry, it's like really cold out here. Um, so another concern I have is the, the thickness of the walls. Hopefully there's some spots that aren't as thick. I'm gonna have to go back if, if it starts really heating up the sides, um, the stainless steel. Hopefully that holds up, that's another concern. I did raise it up off the floor so that will allow some airflow uh, to cool the outer skin I guess you want to call it but this thing's like heavy as hell now uh, which is a good sign it's really solid um, another concern I might that I kind of have is um, that crack being not big enough or or maybe too big I don't know I never really experimented with that the the air vent in there uh, that's why I did it a little bit differently than some other people I put a cap I put it all the way through and put a cap so I could uh, use an air gun or you know, turn it up on its end and, and hammer on it on the, on the end of that pipe and it'll get all the stuff out that falls down in that crack so it's not kind of in there forever. Um, <clears throat> which I guess you could do with the other end, but I put a 90 there, so I'd have to take the 90 off and the, end the hose and everything. It just, I don't know, I just wanted to do that. Uh, I got my super awesome tiny little cheapo anvil. I, I am in the market for an actual j big anvil. I'll probably end up putting this one on that stump that I have, um, and then I have a full size. I have a bunch of full size stumps that I'm going to put a full size anvil on. So, another thing, I got fire bricks. So if it's not getting quite hot enough, maybe I can lay them over the top uh, to refract a little bit more heat from escaping out the top. So, got everything here. Got a little piece of rebar. I just want to test it out. This is its. It's a maiden voyage here. It's first time being used, and let's see, let's see if it holds up. Uh, one thing, also, guys, is if you do end up making a forge like this, uh, there there are some cases where there's air pockets, or there have been instances where there's air pockets in the plaster of Paris, and uh, once it heats up, you get a blowout, and it just sends shrapnel and metal and stone and everything, sand flying in all directions so I'm gonna get this going get it cranking get it pretty warm um, and then step out and kind of watch it from a distance with safety glasses for I don't know maybe 20-30 minutes and uh, yeah we'll see how it goes right now I'm gonna use these vice grips as my tongs uh, with gloves I know they're not welding gloves but I don't know we'll see how it works hopefully it doesn't get too hot uh, <laughs> which is not what you want to say with a forge, but anyway, I'm going to use those, and then I have another piece of rebar just like that that I'm going to make uh, my pair of tongs out of, so I'm going to forge my forge tongs uh, with my first forge. Um, <laughs> all right, so let me get a camera set up. I'll get uh, some newspaper in there. Some I have some cowboy hardwood <clears throat> lump charcoal, so cool. I don't know if that's the best to use. I don't know if it isn't. I guess we'll see, huh? This is just all learning experience for me. Um, another thing I also might do is connect this from a distance, but I wanted to wait um, until I figure out if that's enough airflow or not. It looks, it looks like it might be too narrow of a diameter hose, but I want to connect that to that and have it like all one big uh, piece. Obviously have it a good distance away, like arm length away, but I don't know, might have to shorten the hose or get get bigger, like I said, I don't know. So let me set up the camera and let's uh, get this thing cooking.
Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, so I'm back. That was a disaster and a, a massive mess. Um, hold on, let me turn the hair dryer off. All right, guys, that was a that was just a, a disaster and a massive mess. Uh, like I just said, that bellow does not work <laughs> at all. I need I needed to hook up uh, one of my wife's hair dryers, um, and then I'll I'll buy my own. But just for now, to get it working, I actually, I had to do that. The bellow, it, it it does not work. I mean, I guess for for the old style ones, they had just massive, huge versions of these, and they would just do it slowly. Uh, but with this tiny little one, I mean, it's good for a fireplace and stuff to get down so you don't burn your hands. But it pulls in so much air. And smoke and everything um, on every time you fill it back up with air and then you blow it and it's just putting the fire uh, out and then <laughs> putting it back to life and then out and then back to life and it's just ridiculous um, obviously a powered source like a hair dryer or a uh, air mattress pump uh, would be the best but I think I'm still gonna stick with I'm gonna buy my own hand hair dryer just in case um, this doesn't work but I'm gonna get one of them little hand crank ones uh, the rotary style that you mount and you twist because that's air out only. Uh, there's no drawback of the air. Uh, so yeah, let me let me get this up and nice and hot. Put some more coals on it, and I'll get back with you in like 20 minutes, half an hour, when I make sure it gets up to a good temperature and we don't have any blowouts and nothing crazy or dangerous happens. So yeah, I'll be back with you soon here. All right, so I'll turn that the blower down just uh, so you can hear me um, so one thing I did notice I had it going no blowouts nothing crazy nothing dangerous so far so uh, towards the back here um, there's not as much airflow I can either take a Dremel or a grinder or something and and continue that air strip that I have going uh, but I kind of like it because you could have kind of you could have a little supply of coals back here if you're working on something small and, and keep rotating them up front so let me turn it back on and see if we can get some metal hot enough to hammer it out and uh, yeah yeah. So, as you guys can see, it heats pretty good. I mean, not crazy white hot, nothing crazy, uh, but yeah, enough to do some some bends on it and flatten it a little bit, um, yeah, and do just general uh, blacksmithing stuff. So um, this I've turned the air off and everything. I'm just gonna kind of let it die down and and uh, clean it up and get this thing. Um, out of working order but uh yeah one thing one thing I did kind of realize and notice and that I'm probably gonna make an improvement on is I'm gonna put sides on it it definitely needs sides um, it's just not deep enough or wide enough um, to I don't know it's just I don't like how wide or deep it is uh, the sides uh, the actual trough the body of the of the forge itself uh, seemed to hold up good. That wasn't a crazy long amount of time. That was probably 45 minutes to an hour of uh, the blower being on. And uh, yeah, so the refractory compound, the plaster of Paris and sand and water, um, seems to be holding up pretty good. I don't have it all 
cleaned out yet, so I'll see what it looks like down at the bottom of the pipe and stuff. Um, see if it warped or closed or opened or did anything weird. Um, like I said, I did put, <clears throat> I've, I've had the whole black pipe up, this pipe running through with the air supply. Um, I raised it up and put the refractory compound under it because that pipe's going to get hot and I don't want it to burn through the bottom. So, I mean, I can't really lift it up right now because it's so hot, but uh, I doubt it did anything. I can't see anything that happened. The walls look good, uh, but I do eventually want to make something as well as get an anvil. I showed you guys my stump I have for this little guy, and then I have a, a full-size stump, uh, or a full round stump for when I get a uh, regular full-size anvil. Um, <clears throat> those are really hard to come by, especially if you don't have a lot of money, but I am gonna rig something up, some sort of a base, probably a metal base, um, and then I wanna cut notches or, or somehow have, have fire bricks just the whole length kind of make walls for the sides because there was a little bit of issue of charcoal falling off and everything but not a huge crazy issue I mean if you don't want to do anything extra um, yeah I mean this will be good enough for little stuff that you might need to do again this is rebar it's a little thicker if you had thinner thinner stuff obviously it's gonna bend a lot easier um, yeah other than that uh, so major lesson learned, the bellow does not work. <laughs> um, and I hope you guys had fun with me building this. I had fun. Um, it's a cool little forge. Uh, my first forge. So I hope to make some pretty cool stuff. My first thing I'm going to make is tongs. Um, kind of <laughs> started the shape of it. Not really, but uh, not really intentionally. But my first thing I'm going to make is tongs because I don't want to be using these. I want to have nice nice tongs and I'm going to drift the holes. Obviously, beginner, I'll probably end up drilling them because it's too difficult, but I'm going to try to drift the holes. I don't know if this can even get hot enough to drift, uh, but either way, I'll flatten uh, at the pivot point, flatten it and drill it or drift it and put a pin in and make some pretty cool tongs uh, so I don't have to use these uh, vice grips. So yeah, that's basically it, guys. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll throw up a, a picture of the forge in action uh, as a thumbnail and everything, but just know if you're watching this for the second time, which I don't know you would, if you or who would, um, that bellows don't work, and my entire build ends up getting changed at the very end uh, when I finally move metal with it. So yeah, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for the uh, bearing with this long ass video and me and my chubby fingers. Um, like, comment, subscribe. There's a lot more to come, especially uh, with forging and stuff. I'm really, first time you hit metal and it moves is pretty cool. Uh, so I definitely got the, got the bug, got the itch. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned. Lots of cool stuff coming up, gear related as well. Uh, but yeah, have a good one guys.